first to those disastrous retail sales numbers. Emily McCormick has been watching that all morning long. Good morning, Emily. Good morning, Alexis. And it is worth repeating that headline figure. So U.S. retail sales dropped by 16.4% in April over the prior month, falling by a fresh record after March's revised 8.3% decline. That was also worse than the 12% decline that had been expected by consensus economists. Ex excluding auto and gas sales, we saw retail sales still drop by 16.2% in April, following a 2.6% drop in March on that measure. Now, some economists do look at this metric as a better gauge of underlying trends in where consumers are spending. Taking a look by category, we had clothing and clothing accessory stores posting by far the largest slide at 78.8% in April over March. We also saw electronics and appliance store sales post a steep decline of nearly 61%, and furniture store sales were down 58.7%. The only major category that posted in advance in April were non-store retailers, which captures e-commerce and does make sense when you think about those stay at home uh, and just uh, consumers generally turning to these online stores in order to make those purchases. So those are up about 8 points. 8% uh, for the month. Now, taking a look at the market reaction, we do have stock futures holding lower, extending their overnight declines, heading into the opening bell. Each of the three major indices are off about 1%. And again, those headline retail sales did fall by a record and more than expected in April. Alexis? And Emily, I know we've got more earnings reports we want to sift through. And it really is the tale of two retailers this morning. Looking at JD.com from China, uh, surge in sales there in the latest quarter. But on the flip side of that, you've got the apparel retailer VF Corporation swinging to a loss as revenue declined big time during this COVID-19 pandemic. Can you break down those reports for us? Absolutely, Alexis. And again, this does speak to the trends that we saw in those headline retail sales figures where we had e-commerce stores really being the big gainers here and those uh, stores that have a larger physical footprint really suffering. And that's exactly what we saw with VF Core. So swung to a loss during the March quarter with its loss per share from continuing operations at $1.22. And that was a steep decline from earnings of $0.32 cents a share in the same quarter last year, also worse than had been expected. Also saw quarterly revenue of $2.1 billion, down 35% over last year, also missing consensus expectations. We saw each of VF's major brands posting sales declines over last year, led by Timberland with a 19% drop in revenue, though we did see North Face, Vans, and Dickies all down year on year. Now, VF's retail stores in Asia Pacific, including in mainland China, have reopened. The company said today that while retail store traffic has improved recently, it still remains down significantly compared with the prior year. They've also started a phased reopening of retail stores in Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. And in North America, they said they're preparing to begin a phased reopening there as well. And then finally, taking a look at JD.com, we've seen a similar boost to what we've seen with e-commerce stores like Amazon. Amazon, where sales really have surged amid the coronavirus pandemic and with people turning online. They also forecast strong revenue guidance for the second quarter uh, for revenue of between 180 billion to 195 billion yuan, which is higher than consensus estimates, even at the low end of that range. Taking a look at the market reaction here, we have VF Core earning uh, uh, that stock is down 4.4% in the pre market. JD.com, on the other hand, up nearly 3%. Alexis? All right, thanks a lot, Emily.